Right, in this tutorial I want to talk about the division of indices. In a previous video I spoke about the multiplication law of indices or what happens when we multiply indices together. Here I want to talk about what happens when we divide indices by each other. So I'm going to give you an example of a very basic um, index uh, 4 to the power of 6 and I want to divide 4 to the power of 6 by 4 to the power of 3. Okay, now this is just a very basic division uh, between two indices. Now, if we look at this division, this is just a regular division. Um, there's another way of writing this. Another way of writing 4 to the power of 6 divided by 4 to the power of 3 is this. So we can say 4 to the power of 6 over 4 to the power of 3, like that. And this is the method that I want to stick to in this tutorial when I'm talking to you about division and the reason will become clear in a second. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to show you the expansion method. I spoke about the expansion method and what expanded form means in a previous slide. So I'm just going to put 4 to the power of 6 in expanded form first. So 4 to the power of 6 means 4 multiplied by itself six times. So 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Okay, so that's 4 to the power of 6. Now, I'm going to place this over 4 to the power of 3. Now, I've changed the color, so that will be 4 times 4 times 4. Okay, so we have 4 to the power of 6 in expanded form here and 4 to the power of 4, uh, 4 to the power of 3, sorry, in expanded form there. Now, as we know with division, with division, when we have fractions, here we've we've got a fraction. Fractions are divisions. Um, when we think back to what we know about fractions, we know that when we have a fraction, let's say 2 over 2, we can cancel this out and that actually equals 1. So whenever we have a numerator and a denominator that are identical, we can cancel those two out and they will they will just equal one. So we can actually apply this rule here because when we're looking at our top and bottom or our numerators and denominators for this fraction, let's say, or this quotient, quotient is just another name for a division, we can see that we've got the same value. So we've got a four here and a four here. So what we can do is we can cancel those two out, they become one. Um, we can repeat this process for every other four at the top and at the bottom until we run out of fours. So we've now cancelled all of the fours in our denominator with three fours in our numerator and they just equal one so we don't have to even worry about those and what we end up with is three fours up the top. So if I get rid of this I'm going to show you what that means. Now we know, we know from previous slides, we know that whenever we multiply a base number by itself a number of different times, that number of times now becomes our power. So in this case, we have one, two, three fours remaining. So our new index, when we simplify this quotient, is going to be four to the power of three. Okay, so when we look at that, we knew from the previous video where we used the multiplication law of indices that we simply added our powers together when we multiply. So we know now that we can create these shortcuts whenever we have indices multiplied or divided by each other when the base is the same. So this we can do the same thing here. We can find a rule for our powers just, just like we did with our multiplication rule. So when we look at our 6 and our 3 and then we look at our final power, we can figure out that, all right, well, what if I just simply divide my 6 by the 3? What I get is my new power. Okay, now does this work for another one? Let's try it. Let's, let's rub this out. And I'll try it. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the 4 to the power of 3. So we know that this is 4 to the power of 3. We've said that. All right, let's start with another new quotient. And that's going to be, let's say, 5 to the power of 8. And I want to divide by 5 to the power of 6. Okay. Now, if I use the rule that I 
thought about up here and I say 6 minus 3 is going to give me 3, what I should get is 8 minus 6. So what I should get um, based on what I thought before or the above theory is 5 to the power of 2. Okay, so let's see if it works. So this is what we think we're going to get. So let's see if it works. So we put it in expanded form first. So let's, uh, with this color, let's expand our 5 to the power of 8 first. So that is 5 multiplied by itself 8 times. So we go 5 times 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 5. Okay, so that's 8. And we put it over 5 to the power of 6. So that's 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, so we've got six fives there. All right, and let's start cancelling. So for every five on the bottom, we cancel a five on the top. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All our fives on the bottom are gone, and we're left with two fives, which equals five to the power of two. And you can see that our theory was correct. So we can come up with a new law here that represents quotients or divisions of indices. And if I go to the next slide, I'll write that down for you. So we, we use generally, just like I did with the multiplication law, we use A's and M's and N's. So I'm going to stick to those um, three different variables and I'm going to say the new law is A to the power of M divided by A to the power of N is A to the power of M minus N in this case. Okay, so now this is our law for the division of indices. So this can be said as the division law for indices. Okay, and uh, we can apply this law for any variables or any values for each of these variables. So let's look at... If I last time I, I assigned a value for each of my a, m, and n, so I'll do the same thing here. I'll say a equals two, m equals three, and n equals let's say two. Okay. Now if I substitute the values of a, m, and n into that formula, I should get something that looks like 2, which is my value for a to the power of 3, which is my m, divided by 2 to the power of 2, which is my value for n. And I get now a, oh sorry, not a, start again. I get 2 to the power of 3 minus 2, which is going to give me 2 to the power of 1. Now, 2 to the power of 1, you need to remember, is simply 2. So whenever we have a value that doesn't seem to have a power above it, we always know that that power is going to be a power of 1. And this is really important, particularly when you're adding and subtracting those indices, when you're using your, addition, uh, your multiplication law and your division law for indices, where you've got variables... And I'm going to give you an example of a, a, a division that's got variables in it in a second. When you're using um, the division and multiplication law where you've got variables you need, or even values, you need to understand that when there is a variable there or a value there that's got no power, the power is always 1. So I'll give you an example of, let's just make room here, of a division with a variable. So let's start with x to the power of 7. And I want to divide x to the power of 3. So I'm not going to use the expansion method here. I simply use my rule and I know that base and I subtract my powers. So I'm going to get x to the power of 4. And it really is as simple as that. It's very, very straightforward. And the same thing will happen when you've got a, um, a quotient where 
you've got more than one variable. For example, if I have a to the power of 7, b to the power of 6, divided by a, b, 5. Okay, so we've got something that looks like that. Now we know that in a previous video when I was talking about the multiplication rule, we know that we only group together the variables that have got the same base num or the same base letter. Okay, so I'm looking at my A's and I'm looking at their powers and I'm looking at B's and their powers. So they're the B's and these are the A's. Now remember I said when there's no power above the letter, the letter's always the power is always 1. So we've got here a 7 minus 1 and we've got b b 6 minus 5. Okay? So we end up with a to the 6 b to the 1 which can be rewritten a 6 b. Okay? So when we have a power of 1 we don't need to express the power. Okay, and that is our final answer. So that's the second law for indices, or the second index law. So the first one was the multiplication law of indices. This second one is the division law of indices. And they're very straightforward. Again, as I said previously, if you use this formula, if you use that rule, you can't really go long, wrong. As long as your base number is the same, you can simply subtract your powers when you divide two indices together and that's it.